Hi, I'm Scott. And I'm Lee. Join, Join us, us as, as we, we journey, journey around, around the world. world. Let's see. I'm going to try one of these and I guess we'll have to discover what all of this is later on. And we'll start with the chicken samosa and then we'll try to find out from this fella here. Hello, you can help us with thanks, uh, with what to order, okay? Looks delicious. Let's start with Looks really one, good. Uh, okay. Chicken samosa and one Now what's the difference between an onion ball and an onion padoka? Which what's the difference? It's onion ball. Okay. It's onion ball. A green bean, a banana ball, and an onion ball. A banana ball, yes, thank you. And one onion. Sweet Lori, which one? One onion. One onion. Wait, trying new food. Wonderful. Here we're trying whatever we bought. We're not sure what the name of it, but this one's a green bean ball. How is that one? When I was thinking green bean, I'm thinking a long bean. This is like a green pea. Good. So it would be a vegetarian. We don't know what this one is. It was the mystery one. We asked which one was his favorite. So he chose this. Looks like there's some corn in it. Got a little seasoning leaf. Like a corn fritter. Or a hush puppy. Yeah. Really, just a, a corn with, with some onion. The banana ball. It's kind of dense. Spongy, like, like, look. Oh. Ooh. Maybe banana flour? Is it like banana bread, maybe? Mm. Uh -huh. Really, 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 really mild. Not much banana flavor, but at the same time, not overly sweet either. So, yeah, spongy. What we didn't show you was the chicken samosa. It was really tasty. Both of us really liked it. Um, I would definitely order that again. I forgot what he called this. Perry? Look at this. It just looks so interesting. We saw it last night when we walked by and I said, I have to try one of those. It's just a fried dough. It doesn't really have much flavor. As you can see, I've already kind of gotten into it. And then it just has um, a glaze, just a sugar. Um, confectioner sugar glaze um, on it but I don't know it was just fun and um, yeah tasty so we already had a couple bites very good we're gonna take the rest back to the room and it can be some dessert for later Let's go shopping in this Indian store and see what kind of unique things we can find to buy. Mm. 
it's amazing how many different spices that there are in the world. I haven't even scratched the surface in cooking with them all. Here are the snacks we picked up from the Indian store. We got over here are some uh, chickpea snacks. Over here, is, I don't even know how to say it, but some hard, crispy type of tortilla type things. We got some Marcella peanuts. And here we got some little, looks like a little dessert with sesame seeds. Chickpea things. Looking at it, I thought it looked like the shoestring potatoes. Like, hey, it might be good made with uh, chickpeas. Let's see. It's kind of gritty but it does have the indian taste to it but i wouldn't get these again going for the sesame dumplings i think it's like a little sesame candy mm. it's like a sesame candy Sesame seeds and a, and a honey. They are kind of hard. I'm afraid they might break my teeth. Trying the crispy naan bread or whatever it is called. Just kind of a plain biscuit. They say you're supposed to eat it with tea. It also does come with this little uh, seasoning packet that I think has got coriander, some mango, and some pepper, and maybe a couple other spices you could sprinkle on it. So we'll try that too. I'm actually looking forward to trying these. I love peanut, not sweet, savory. Mm. I'm getting onion and a chili. These are keepers. I like them. Let's see what Scott thinks. Got the Marcella peanuts. Let's try them. Kind of a spicy peanut. Got a little spice to it. Not too bad. Edible. Not my favorite, but edible. This is a great place to catch some local food. This is a food market. And it opens at 7 in the morning till about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Everything that you could want. So suits everybody's taste. We just ordered a large one of these. It's a duck noodle. So less than two dollars. And look at this beautiful soup. It's another hot one today. No surprise. What is it? 104 real heat. We're gonna go to the shopping mall. Mm. And get some food first thing. In order to ride the buses here in Penang, you need to wear a mask. Or they won't let you on. Make sure you carry one with you. architecture in this city.
Today we're having lunch at a Taste of Tixin. It's a very popular Chinese restaurant. There's people waiting in line to get in. It's a full house. We ended up um, ordering a homemade herbal tea. It's reminding me of a black syrup medicine when I was a kid that mom used to give me for an upset stomach. So I think next time we'll pass on Cheers. the home. <laughs> Cheers for tea. all that ails you. <laughs> you know? Here we are at a bakery, and look at these delicious croissants. I think we're gonna get ourselves some uh, ham and cheese for lunch, and then who knows for dessert. Check out these desserts. And there's more. Delicious looking. So downstairs is the cafe, and upstairs is the museum. Let's go check this place out. Simulation of what the cacao plant would look like. Going to the history of chocolate, looks like it dates back 3,500 years ago. This is interesting. They're saying cacao beans were used as currency. Pumpkin, you could purchase with four beans, one rabbit. You could purchase with 10 beans and one turkey egg. It's three beans. Really is amazing, the history of chocolate. This is a really comprehensive display. All hail the king of chocolate. Get me my chocolate bar. How often do you get to sit in a throne? So when the opportunity presents itself, you go for it. Who eats the most chocolate? What country? Switzerland, followed by Germany, Ireland, United Kingdom. Cortez, the Spanish explorer, brought cocoa beans back with him to present to King Charles V in 1528. This is the secret recipe of the Spanish. They were able to keep it a secret from the rest of Europe for nearly a hundred years. The consumption of cocoa continues to spread throughout Europe. Anne of Austria, the daughter of the King of Spain, marries the French King Louis XIII in 615 and they move to France. Anne of Austria brings with her her maid, who is an expert in the preparation of the cocoa drink. Slowly, drinking chocolate becomes a habit at the royal court. In 1657, London opened its first chocolate house. Fifty years later, there were more than 2,000 chocolate houses in London. Besides a place to drink chocolate, these chocolate houses were also a place to discuss politics, socialize, and gamble. Through with the tour upstairs. Now we're ready for the fun part. 
taste testing. I'm taking one for the team here. Somebody had to step up and buy a box of chocolates. Even some chocolate here from Ghana, Africa. But there is something for everyone here. We settled for the dark chocolate for both options. This one is 55% and this one's 70% cocoa content. Let's give this a try. 55%. A good rich cocoa, a semi-sweet flavor. Both of these I liked because they're in a bite size. 70% deep cocoa flavor. I really enjoy these barrel chocolates. Watch out Godiva, Barrels is coming for you. Besides the location here in Georgetown, there's also one in Kuala Lumpur, about 30 minutes south of the Petronas Towers. It's called Barrels Wonderland. So there's a museum, and then there's also a cafe. Then there's an outlet. We're on our way to visit a Chinese temple and stumbled across this guy. This guy is selling the best homemade baklava with goat cheese, cashews, almonds, pistachio. They gave us a sample and we were sold. Thank you. Thank you guys, have a beautiful day. Join us next time as we tour the Chinese jetties and take you to the top of Kam Tar, the tallest building in Georgetown. <laughs> it's a great... We stopped by an Indian store, picked up a couple snacks. We're gonna, we picked up a couple snacks. We're gonna give them a... Kakakara, Harakara, Hak, Hakara.